Hey everyone, it's Friday night. We're gonna start with episode 9 of Merchants of Kaidan. Just opened up Steam and I saw that an update was happening, so I waited until it finished and now we're recording now. I don't know what it includes. Forever Entertainment could be a little bit better about putting the notes up as they've produced it, but maybe that's something tricky on Steam's end. But we don't care overly much about that. But if there's some glitch, it might be because of some weird update. So with caveats aside, we are just about to enter autumn here. And we would really like, in this episode, to rank up in the Merchant's Guild before winter hits. As we learned from last winter, it can get kind of dicey um, in terms of how much money you can make, unless you're really smart, which I'm not sure I I'm quite Merchants of Kaidan guru yet. yet. So we'll get right to it. Let's look at what we have in our cart, since I never remember what we had at the end of previous episodes. We have a touch of ore, just sell it off really quick, empty up the cart. And let's see. Nothing's really that great here. Wood is kind of tempting. Let's, let's just do wood really quick. Buy that up. And we want to go to Overos and pick up our Merchant's Guild quest. So let's just go through our favorite route, <laughs> it seems, of going down through Ugron. Or Ergon, Dalka, and it's over us. So we'll just do that trade really quick. Hopefully, drop off some wood in Ergon and uh, pick up some ore. That always seems to sell really well. So here we are. Ooh, that was quite a good choice. 11 quai per unit of wood. That's several thousand gold made right there. Oh, yes. Yes. Um. An ore, of course, is beautiful. Uh, yeah, we're gonna make some good money, I think, for this episode. We would also like to get four carts. And actually, why not? Just we, I, I'm pretty sure we can afford a whole new one right with that cash we have right now. So, yeah, let's do it. Oh, need to hire on a third guy. Third guy. Hey, first person in the tavern. Hey there. I think we turned you down the road before for a job. You still interested? Higher asking cost this time, but I guess you got on your feet to the next town, so that's fine. Your labor is in demand, so we will buy it. We'll also buy this cart. And. We'll buy a Lichalian over us. We aren't in such a rush that we need to have our speed bonus all the time. And let's load up... Ooh, wow, yeah. 2,000 more capacity. Uh, we can't really afford... Can we? How much? Yeah, let's just uh, wait till over us. We'll make our profit first. Oh, although... Let's see if we can increase our luck here. 14 or What's cool about that is that we got it basically for free. I guess that was 90 plus 170 is uh, uh, two, two, 260, sorry. I was a math major. 260 quai for that many units. Let's see. Let's see, 45. I mean, definitely, it's free money. Let's try to sell an Overus. We're drug dealers now. Oh, what if we stoop down to? Oh no! Has many fine uses other than getting high, I'm sure. Beowulf hurt some of our ill herbs. That wacky tabacky. Okay. Fall has arrived, so we definitely need to get all the money we possibly can. Okay. I guess the locals in the countryside already have their hill herb, 
so they aren't willing to pay that much for it. Eventless journey? Home at last. Oh, my friend, I can't tell you how tell you how grateful I am. Please, take the gold I promised, though it isn't much. Thank you. Farewell. You're a good... Possibly the least crazy person we've carted around before. Enjoy the kingdom. Okay, let's get rid of this illicit material as quick as possible. 54 will take it. And the, as for the ore, good price? Yeah, very good. 7 coin per unit. the quest? Ah oh, yeah, basically the we have to do a profitable two-way deal between the uh, Barbarian Lands and Empire involving 50 units on each of the trades. Uh, the 50 units shouldn't be the hard part, but figuring out a good trade, particularly with the Barbarians, can be kind of tricky sometimes. But with the Empire, Vergoto and Narheim, I've always just had the best luck with it. Later on in the game, in one of my save, uh, save games I played before, uh, I just would have my one of my sh uh, my ship partner go between those two ports for a good portion of the year. I was able to make money most of the time. It was pretty good. So, all right, we need to complete the task. We're well above the wealth needed uh, to be eligible for the quest. So what is going to be cheap in Empire? Or what can we sell there at least? Wood, maybe, could be good. 23 wood isn't a bad price. So we'll buy 100 units of it. I kind of want to see if we can get cheap hides or something good in Vergoto on the way. So we'll just go up straight up over us to Vergoto along the uh, river coastal road, not through the mountains. Just in the interest of time. We have 50 days to do this all. I don't know what it is about magnates in the kingdom, but they never seem to be happy with their mercenaries. Whenever we hire mercenaries, they do a good job. They just need to have better people skills, I think. All right, get him back to his town though. All right, so careful note of what's selling here. Wood won't be too hard. And ore is very good here. Well, ore's not amazing here, but it's definitely worth considering. Narheim's definitely a very nice town. But they tend to buy things, in my experience. Like, you don't buy cheap there, but you sell well there. Admittedly, a lot of my experience involves more jewelry and porcelain and arms from the other games. I'm not as familiar with the lower trading stuff that we're dealing with. So, let's just... Hmm... I think we'll be able to sell the wood for a profit. We only need to make one silver profit per unit for it to count towards the quest. And I don't tend to see ore selling very well above 37, so we won't fall for that. And hey, if we do see it happening, then we can always just quick, you know, bunny hop across the channel. Oh, we need to help the merchant being robbed. Yeah, that event has never failed me, so I always take it. A little bit of meta gaming <laughs> uh, means we can buy food and A of really cheap. Maybe we'll have to have a feast next time we go on summer vacation up there. All right, in Narheim. All right, yes, we can sell the wood very cheap. There's one of the trades completed. In fact, though, it turns out we had a food deal here, and we could have just bought food here and sold it at a good margin, so it's guaranteed. <laughs> oh well. 
Now, here's the main bit, though. We need to see if we can buy anything here that sells well in Vergoto. Um, but, kind of like how I predicted, Narheim's definitely a selling environment, rather than a buy environment. Do they have something universally low? Olive oil for 36. Uh, it's really marginal, but it's, it's selling okay in Urgun 13 days ago. We could get there in a week. It is cheap ish. We'll buy 50 units of it. Just for satisfying the quest. Um. But I'm not sure we're going to make a profit on anything else. Maybe carpets? Hmm. Not too hopeful. How much does 50 carpets cost? 61 each. 3,000 ish? We'll do it. Just because I really want to get this quest in. I think somewhere along the way we'll be able to sell carpets. Well, we'll go to Vergoto. We'll hopefully get the Empire part of this quest done. If we take a little bit of a loss... Oh, excellent. Olive oil is selling at a great rate here. Should have been more bold maybe and bought it entirely. Whoa, 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 whoa. What did I click on? Okay, well, whatever. And we can't quite sell carpets in a good price here, but that's okay. Now we need to think about what we could bring to the barbarian lands. I'm not an expert at barbarians, but I think or like Urgun level, or always sells pretty well in Rashan. So what we'll do is we'll buy up our luck. Nice. What is our luck at? 1.6. That's that's quite good, actually. No, it's not really good. Um, one second. And I'm back. Just a little hiccup. Happens rarely, but it does happen sometimes. Overall, the game is pretty nice and tightly knit, except maybe for some of the spelling. <laughs> During a stop, you met another trader who offers you a game of craps. Do you want to play? We have... oh, what is it that we have? We have carpets at kind of a crap price, or not the best price, rather. We'll play. We'll diversify a bit. Oh, liquor, yes. Liquor is definitely a trade-up, although... I'm not sure we got have a good price on it even then. Liquor likes to be bought around 50-ish, if I remember right. Yeah, they aren't good prices. That's okay. We're mostly interested in uh, loading up on cheap ore in Ergon. Werewolves? At least they aren't stink beavers. <laughs> no one died. That's the important thing. We'd like to run a safe, a safe ship here at Sewerburned Co. <laughs> um, oh, liquor's selling quite well here. I mean, we only have three units. Eventually, <laughs> booze and guns, we, we, I like selling. They're quite good. Of course, with porcelain and uh, jewelry. None of which we can buy. <laughs> but a little taste of the future. We'll load up on ore, I think. At some point in autumn. Whoa, okay. I didn't realize uh, it was that much. We'll sell off the carpets for liquidity. I'm really doubtful we're gonna get a good price on them. Can't buy our luck anymore. Or can we buy more luck? Buy it before we go over. I'm really trying to 
up our luck as much as we can because barbarian lands in contrast to the empire which has like five different cities in it barbarian lands only have two and really i've only ever gotten a deal in Rashun if there's a deal at all maybe i'm doing it wrong but what that means is that when we make this trip we really need to make sure it's a good one not beset by a bad luck so we'll go down never really well actually we need to buy a lechalian we want to be kind of going quick i think some people in the world are skeptical about the value of having a a leech with legs as their mount in this game but 33% passive speed of uh, speed increase just adds up so much over time. That's like having a an extra month every season, you know, of actual getting to places. Unidentified item by the side of the road. I wonder if people make a living in like this game world just stashing boxes in random places. So, like, uh, like the idea being, it's like, oh, are you too busy with your actual job in life to stow random things by the side of the road for traders to find? Well, here at the Nebaru, uh, <laughs> here at the Nebaru, uh, box hider, we can provide that service for cheap. It's probably really lame. I think it's funny. <laughs> Alright, we're just rolling on through. Sadly, we haven't filled up our extra cart. We're a little bit into the capacity. Yeah, let's play. Oh, whoa. We just turned like 600 kilograms of ore, like unrefined, like iron ore into gems and at a oh man we just got this we just got this we there it is impossible for us to not make profit on that jewelry we just won the only question is if it's, if we got 50 units of jewelry out of that because it has to be 50 units to satisfy the uh, quest <sighs> this is potential. This is quite possibly the best craps results I've ever had. Is getting 196 units of jewelry for 34 kwai each. Um, put that in perspective. It's really common for towns to only have, you know, about this much in their entire stock. So we just got in, and it's usually selling for like. 80, 70, or something like that. The profits here are ridiculous. Oh, oh man. Celebrate! Yeah, alright. Mmm, <laughs> that felt so good. This is why it's fun to play trading simulator games. If that kind of thing you can't get excited over, it might not be the game for you. That's definitely the game for a math geek like me. Alright. Oh, although, little wrinkle there. That jewelry di didn't count towards our quest because we didn't buy it. Hmm, so it's. But we still managed to satisfy the quest with our smart ore. So, very good. Okay. Oh, and we have a similar situation that we had in Narheim where we could have just come here and used up one of these contract thingies. Useful thing maybe in your game if you're playing a log. You can kind of do that. Like, um, I'm not too bothered with losing this trade. Let's try that out as well. So I'm gonna buy a whole ton and sell them. Good. And very intelligently. Oh, nice. We unlocked a Steam Achievement. We'll have to see what that is later. Intelligently, the game designers only let you do that once, so you don't get the cheats. Or, 
It's market arbitrage. It's not cheating. It's it would be cheating if we could do that in a role playing sense. So we need to buy something cheap here. I think we can get 26 for wood. Okay. Okay. Um, little fussiness with the menu in this update. Like uh, clicking on this was getting me uh, clicking on an item. Uh, anyways. Um, Wood in Neverose was 31. It doesn't seem so obscene that we'll eventually be able to make money off of 26 wood. So we'll buy... No, we'll just buy 100 units. We only have to be profitable by one silver penny. How many days more left do we have in the journey? 22. We're barely halfway through the time allotment. And we're about halfway through autumn. These kind of berries here mark, you can see winter coming. Winter's coming. Let's pop through Sharsum. Oh, we've never actually read the uh, text from here. I don't know how to read it while in the town. We found another unidentified item. But let's let's just quickly read what's up with Rishun. I've never read the description. Oh. Wow. That's kind of a cool picture there. Huh. Af managed to mold something in the shape of a city. They even have an inn. But the liquors there are worse than Layak lay piss. It doesn't sound good. I don't know what a Layak is, but pretty sure I wouldn't drink its piss. <laughs> I think they have some kind of like magic somewhat evil or maybe a like a druidic force here in the barbarian lands. Because they reference the eighth for the description for Sharsun too. Let's check the market. Seven food is not marked for how cheap it is. Hides are very cheap too. Eleven. And we can buy ice. I've never dealt with the ice trade. Maybe we'll play around with that this winter. That might be an idea. I'll maybe uh, look a little bit online. Well, no. If we do ice, we'll do it blind. That's half the fun of the let's play. We'll just buy up, buy up, buy up. We'll make a profit on one of these, and then the. Uh, Holy cow, we filled up our carts and we still have 22,000. I still remember when we had difficulty making, covering our road traveling expenses. It's definitely fun. Let's, um, we want to go to Overos. So the most uh, direct way there is to... Oh, we haven't been to Van Hoes in almost a year. Let's go through Van Hoes, Nadari, Dunlar. We don't come down here that often. Oh, there's a town here called Gnote that we have to go to the way. Gnote is worth visiting after the grape harvest. And the inhabitants throw a wine celebration that takes no less than 10 days. It is middle of autumn. Maybe, they, maybe we'll see some uh, country fairs there. Maybe take a day or two off. Okay, let's just sell really quick. Alright. We finished the guild test. Now we just need to leisurely uh, make our way to Overos. But first, the van holes. Perhaps. Yeah, sure. I'm in jovial mood. Turn food into hides. We have the magic touch. Okay, buy up our luck. Yes. When you have this much money, those shrines aren't as much of a gamble, it's just a luck tax. 
it's working out well for us, but I sometimes I like when things scale up with you. Maybe if the cards cost more over time. But I guess the bad luck events, well, bad luck events hit you pretty hard. They scale up, so maybe that should scale up too. Just a game design idea. We'll empty our carts. We're sitting on pretty cushy little working fund here. 21 clothes is quite lucrative. 55 carpets. Yeah, yeah, we'll buy up carpets at that price. It can definitely end up getting uh, prices that are worth looking at. Let's check the cantor. What are these horns? Mugu's antlers. This magnificent deer, a target of countless hunting, is almost extinct now. The beast's antlers are highly sought after decoration. I'm not sure we endorse that. Oh! What does it cost to take a boat to over us? Three days and 137. Yeah, let's just do it. I want to see what exactly we unlock with the merchant's thing. The merchant's rank up. Alright. You have proved that you are a full-fledged international merchant. Having paid the handling fee of 1,500 trigons, you receive the emblem of a registered trader. Okay. Went from trader to registered trader. Excellent. Now our icon's getting a little bit more fancy, moving up in the world. I like it. Okay, and we're already eligible for the next uh, Merchant Guild quest. But let's see who's looking for us in the market first. Kind sir, would you help a pilgrim? I travel for many months now to reach the ceremonies in Tanangan, but it seems I won't make it in time alone. I'm not a wealthy man, but I'll pay you as much as I can for your trouble. Will you help me, my friend? But we failed it. Oh, that'd be nice if you get to get free try quests. Yeah, we'll, we'll help you better than we helped the last guy. Or at least try to. Someone's trying to speak to us in the shrine. Are you a man who can be trusted with a secret? I represent the Amethyst of Bishop, who will reimburse you if you help this lady. She's very close to the Bishop. She needs to be escorted to the High Monastery in Vergoto. I will personally supervise the trip. Are you up for the task? Well, you have three cards, and we can have three folks, so... Come on in. I'll buy up a lot. Fifteen minutes for a that's a good deal. Alright, so what's the merchant quest we want to do? Citizen. A citizen of the kingdom is more than just a regular merchant. Such a person can settle matters with offices in the kingdom, receive official royal orders, and can, for example, use an official letter of safe conduct. In order for a merchant to become a citizen, though, he must prove that he can cope not only on land in the kingdom. You have 70 days to earn 10,000 trigons only and exclusively by traveling on a ship. Start your first sea journey in Vergoto, and end it there, too. The only time you can go on land is to Vergoto and back. At other times, only by ship. Good luck. Ooh. I remember this quest now. Yeah, because we usually go around in carts, right? But in many of these cities, we have an option of going to the ports. Like, we just came from Van Hose down to here. And so... There's actually quite a bit of, there's an interesting parallel game that you can play mostly by sea, where you're making, you're trying to really capitalize on the time difference between markets. Usually it's faster to go by boat between two locations. Like, um, and so I bet we can definitely make 10,000 uh, trigons if we set our minds to it. And because we have that monk who wants to go to Vergoto anyways, and that monk in Tunnengan, 
both of which are places you can reach by river. This could be an interesting thing to take on as a challenge next episode. And we still have half of a season to do it. 10,000 cry, we can knock that out away pretty quick. So challenge accepted. And we will do it next time. Next episode will be Olivian, River Trader. Thanks for watching. Definitely the highlight of my day these days, I'm doing these episodes. Um, have fun. Thanks for watching. Peace. Thank you.